and Foreign Secretary Dr. S. Jayashankar. Finance Minister will make an opening statement in which he will brief you on the decisions that were taken today. This will be followed by uh, another statement by Mr. Hekmat Karzai and thereafter they have agreed to take a few questions but please remember we are pushed for time. So with that I give the floor to Finance Minister. So thank you very much for all being here. On behalf of the Government of India, I welcome you all. My colleague and co-chair, Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, Mr. Salauddin Rabani, had to return with President Ghani. I am delighted to have the Deputy Foreign Minister, Mr. Karzai, here with us today. I also welcome members of the press from both India and abroad. We have just concluded the sixth ministerial conference of the Heart of Asia Istanbul process on Afghanistan. I am happy to inform you that the conference had substantive deliberations on a number of facets pertaining to the situation in Afghanistan. We were privileged and honored that the conference was jointly inaugurated earlier today by the President of Afghanistan and the Prime Minister of India. In their respective addresses, both the leaders stressed the imperative of eliminating terrorism and violent extremism for ensuring peace, stability, prosperity, not only for in Afghanistan, but also in the entire region. The conference was attended by delegations from practically every participating country, supporting countries, and international organizations, 45 of them in all. The delegations of Afghanistan, India, Iran, Kyrgyz Republic, Pakistan, Turkey, Turkmenistan, and of the European Union were led by their respective ministers. The conference also saw the presence and participation of guest countries, Austria, Bulgaria, Latvia, and Uzbekistan. The conference adopted the Amritsar Declaration, which puts focus on the heart of Asia countries and supporting countries and organizations working together to comprehensively address the menace of terrorism. I trust you have the copies of the declaration or will soon have them. The three big issues of the conference were, one, countering terrorism to create stability and security in Afghanistan, two, providing Afghanistan connectivity to strengthen economic activity, and three, development which is essential for the progress of Afghanistan. The declaration recognizes terrorism as the biggest threat to peace and stability and demands immediate end to all forms of terrorism and all support financing safe havens and sanctuaries to it. For the first time, a Heart of Asia declaration expressed concern at the violence caused in Afghanistan and the region by terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, Daesh, lashkar e taiba and jaish e Mohammed, etc. Apart from calling for concerted international cooperation in this end. The declaration also calls for early finalization of the draft comprehensive convention on international terrorism and early meeting of experts to discuss a draft regional counter-terrorism framework strategy recently prepared by Afghanistan for its early finalization. The discussions and the declarations reiterated the strong support from the heart of Asia countries for Afghanistan's effort to use its geographic location to enhance wider regional economic cooperation. Specific initiatives in this regard, including the India-Iran-Afghanistan trilateral agreement on developing Chabad, were acknowledged. On India's part, we are, were also engaged bilaterally with Afghanistan to upgrade our connectivity linkages with the aim of making Afghanistan, in the words of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, a geography of peace. During the conference, various delegations expressed appreciation for the constructive role that India had been playing in supporting Afghanistan and its people in the past decade and a half. You would also have noticed that the choice of Amritsar as the venue of the conference was a deliberate one intended to highlight the immense potential for regional connectivity and the benefits it can bring to landlocked Afghanistan provided concerned countries show 
the required sincerity and political determination. During the deliberations, the delegations welcomed the offer of the Republic of Azerbaijan to host the next ministerial conference of the Heart of Asia Istanbul process as co-chair in 2017. Over the last two days, when the large majority of participants in the conference were in Amritsar, we had the privilege of arranging visits for them in, to, for some places of historical and spiritual significance in the city, such as the Golden Temple and the Jallianwala Park. They also visited the integrated checkpoint at Atari. Before concluding, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the government of Punjab and the people of Amritsar for their wholehearted support over the last two days for a successful conduct of the conference. It has been a privilege for India to co-chair the Heart of Asia Istanbul process in 2016. As we pass on the baton, we look upon the year with satisfaction. We believe that we have contributed in a significant way to the process through the initiatives we took and the activities we organized for the betterment of Afghanistan. The Amritsar Declaration also refocused attention to certain core requirements of Afghanistan embodied in the Declaration's theme, addressing challenges, achieving prosperity. I would now like to request if the Deputy Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, Mr. Karzai, would like to make his remarks. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum, Namaste, and Sasrikat. Meri Punjabi itni achi nii hai, to mai chata hoon Hindi mein do shabd aapke liye kahoon. Aapka, agar minister saab ka ijaza ho to. Yahaan Punjab mein aur Amritsar mein aake bahut khushi hui. Yeh mohabbat, yeh mehman nawazi, जो आपने हमें दिखाई हम हमेशा के लिए ममनून थे और ममनून रहेंगे मैं चाहता हूं कि हिंद हिंदुस्तान और अफगानिस्तान के दोस्ती दोस्ती के बारे में सिर्फ एक चीज कहूं वो ये कि हमारी दोस्ती हमेशा आबाद रहे और ये तारीखी दोस्ती हमेशा ऐसे ही मजबूत और मजबूत तर रहे आई विल नाउ शिफ्ट टू इंग्लिश विद योर परमिशन your Excellency, thank you for these very kind words. Uh, I welcome all the journalists uh, here uh, for this concluding press conference. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, the sixth ministerial of the Heart of Asia uh, conference uh, has been extremely productive uh, and extremely useful for us. We were treated to enormous warmth to enormous love uh, in the city of Amritsar. Uh, we felt uh, a very deep connection with the city, going all the way back to uh, the visit of uh, Guru Nanak, who we refer to as Baba Nayak in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, nonetheless, this morning we had the two honorable leaders, uh, honorable prime minister and honorable uh, president of Afghanistan inaugurate the session. And they were able to set the tone uh, for the rest of the day. We had around 50 countries supporting international organizations participate in this event. And uh, we had excellent deliberations. Uh, given the uh, talking points that the Honorable Minister just had, I really don't see a point of repeating many of the points because uh, I could not have done or summarized those points uh, in a better way. But uh, what I would like to do is, is make a few points. First, the heart of, region, the heart of Asia region uh, is a region where the challenges and opportunities are collective. We face similar problems, we face similar opportunities, and there are enormous opportunities. And I think our two leaders were able to very eloquently stress that this morning. But we also see in our region the very difficult problem of terrorism and violent extremism. We also see the problem of state nurturing and flirting with terrorism, uh, which obviously not only has consequences for, them, for themselves, but also consequences uh, for the region as a whole.
Uh, just summing up one more point, uh, which is that uh, in terms of, in terms of the, the, the five previous uh, events that we have hosted here, uh, this was significant for several reasons why we were able to host it uh, here in Amritsar, because particularly Amritsar uh, represents uh, an enormous corridor uh, of transport, of trade, uh, which particularly at the end of the day Afghanistan would like to see itself as a bridge connecting South Asia to Central Asia and Central Asia to the Middle East. And there are enormous opportunities, and this is something that uh, we are also uh, continuously exploring. Lastly, once again, our very sincere gratitude to the government and people of India uh, for your support. You have been able to share your bread with us. Uh, you've been able to support us in very difficult circumstances, and we're extremely grateful for that. Uh, and uh, I pray that this relationship uh, continues to stay strong. Thank you very much. I thank the two ministers for their statements. The floor is now open for a few questions. I recognize Sachin Badhalia of Univarta. I believe there are no mics, so please speak up. Oh, there is, there is a mic. now Amritsar declaration has been adopted. Sir, how much time was devoted to terrorism and what was the general sentiment? Well, all the 45 uh, participating delegations have made statements. And as I indicated in my opening uh, comments, that terrorism was uh, really at the core of the discussion because as the Honorable Minister has also pointed out, uh, it's a region uh, which has been adversely impacted by terrorism and therefore the tone was set by the Honorable President of Afghanistan and the Prime Minister of India where terrorism was the center stage issue and therefore as a part of uh, the presentations made by various countries, besides development of Afghanistan, besides improvement on connectivity, terrorism was at the very core. Next, Manish Jha, India TV. Sir, Afghanistan has a connectivity issue. What is India doing about it and what are your expectations from India in this regard? Well, I'll just make a comment and then request the Honorable Minister. Uh, in our presentations, uh, on behalf of India that uh, were made, particularly the one I read out, uh, and the Honorable Prime Minister's statement, uh, there is of course a detailed reference to the port connectivity, uh, and that's a project uh, which is underway. Besides that, uh, Connecting Afghanistan to the port, uh, India is quite open about the possibility of both a road and a rail link. Additionally, an air link, particularly for high value supplies, uh, is also uh, uh, under discussion. The President of uh, Afghanistan did make a reference to it uh, in his opening speech. Would you like to add? Yes. Uh, just very briefly, uh, as I earlier mentioned, Afghanistan sees itself uh, as a land bridge connecting different regions. And particularly with India, I think we have particularly so much to offer. Uh, if you look at trade and commerce, uh, this is one of the areas that we have been very vocal about. We would like to make sure that Afghan goods all the way make or, they, or Afghan goods make it all the way to Waga and Atari. Uh, quite unfortunately, we've been facing problems uh, getting our goods, whether it's dry fruits or whether it's uh, different goods. Uh, we've been having difficulties, so we would like to make sure that we're able to uh, send them all the way from Afghanistan uh, here. But there are difficulties, and we want to make sure that politically we are able to deal with these uh, uh, challenges. 
At the same time, we also want to make sure that Afghanistan, and particularly the, Asian, the region of Central Asia, is quite rich uh, with resources, uh, minerals. I think if you look at the energy infrastructure that is now being developed, particularly if you look at TAPI, which is the uh, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Indian uh, gas pipeline, that is something that is now uh, progressing. Uh, but there are a lot of other projects that we would like to make sure that we are able to, to uh, exploit and excavate, particularly the minerals that Afghanistan has on many of these areas. So we want to make sure that either through Jabahat that was referred to or through various different links that we are able to connect with each other. I'm afraid we have time for just one more question. I recognize Elizabeth Roche. Uh, sir, India has extended a one, uh, an additional $1 billion of assistance to Afghanistan. This was in <coughs> September. Uh, have any projects been identified uh, as to how this billion dollars is going to be utilized? Any specific projects identified? Well, we have been uh, uh, supporting, uh, and one of the key areas is going to be infrastructure in Afghanistan. Uh, also, as a part of this uh, plan, uh, areas such as housing and skills development uh, are two items which could be on the agenda. Uh, the addition of $1 billion that uh, has been very graciously uh, will be provided by India. Uh, there are, have been some preliminary discussions that have taken place, uh, but at the same time, uh, there are certain priorities that the both governments have agreed on, particularly looking at water, uh, looking at uh, creation of certain dams, water management, and as the minister also mentioned, vocational training, skills development uh, in specific areas. So there are discussions that are taking place. Uh, one thing that I should specifically mention, uh, the assistance that India has provided uh, thus far uh, has been quite generous. Uh, and our president also mentioned this morning that it's assistance that is without any strings. There are no political consequences or, or elements, policy ramification that is attached to that. So for that, I think we are grateful. I'm afraid. We Please, this is a press conference on the heart of Asia, Istanbul process. We have just had three questions pertaining to that. I will answer those questions at my regular press conference. I think the ministers have to go now. This press conference comes to a close.